We planned this trip last year when we spent all summer in Houston in stifling heat before leaving in early September for Alaska. We decided on a long trip to the Rocky Mountains with Scout and to hold our annual get-together with family on Labor Day weekend at the end of the vacation. Little did we know then we would be escaping the hottest summer on record in South Texas. We decided to take our relatively new 2023 Maverick because of its excellent fuel economy and the room to pack everything we wanted to in the back and in a compartment that was watertight. This was our longest road trip of our lives, totaling 4,300 miles. To give a sense of that distance, it's equivalent to the straight line distance across the lower 48 states in the U.S. from north to south, plus the distance across the U.S. from east to west. We limited our mileage in one day to 500 miles and tried to take rest stops every two hours. For lunch on the road, we would get takeaway sandwiches and then find a nearby park to enjoy our lunch and allow Scout to get some exercise. Scout is an excellent and easy traveling companion. We left on a Sunday morning, August 13th, Samuel's 11th birthday. We left our home in a drought and extended heat wave and had done all we could to try to prepare for the visit. We had a nice visit with family and Bernie, and this shortened the first day drive on our trip. School had started prior to the prior week. Samuel and Izzy were working with Kristen to establish their daily schedules for school and before and after school activities. This was a good start to our trip. The first stop was Paladura Canyons south of Amarillo. We had rented one of these glimp glamping tents that were air conditioned and we stayed there on our first night away, which was Tuesday, August 15th. It was a pleasant stop, and we got fixings for um, a hamburger supper uh, bef at, and before they closed, and had a really a pleasant evening there. The next morning, uh, I took this picture uh, just before sunrise. The bathrooms were a pretty lengthy walk away so I drove to the bat Sharon to the bathroom and then back and on the way back there were a pack of coyotes out and they were quite loud um, it made for an interesting and quick trip down from the parking lot to our glamping site and a memorable start to the day this is a shot of taken of um, Paladura Canyon uh, shortly after sunrise from the visitor center. It is a beautiful sight. And this is Scout checking out the view of Paladura Canyon as we start our day towards Estes Park. These are all images uh, taken from our VRBO uh, along the Fall River in Estes Park. The location and the uh, cabin itself were just ideal. It's closer to the entrance of the National Park than it was to Estes Park, but still convenient enough to get to the grocery store. It had three bedrooms, one bath, uh, very well appointed uh, kitchen, and um, had a, a back porch, which I'll show in a little while, uh, where we could cook outside and sit outside and enjoy the beautiful, cool weather. Um, there were a number of wild turkeys that uh, came to visit 
uh, every evening, sometimes in the morning, uh, up to 15. It's a scout looking at them on the couch, uh, which was her lookout point. Also, our very dear friend, uh, Gary Bortz, came to stay with us for three days, and uh, we really enjoyed our time with Gary and touring into Rocky Mountain National Park and just catching up and uh, enjoying his his company. Next, I'll show you a brief video taken from the back porch, which shows how close we were to the Fall River, which we enjoyed listening to every night with our windows open uh, in the cool mountain air. I'll throw a series of slides in chronological order uh, taken during the trip. Uh, this first one is of the first morning that we went into the National Park, the morning after we arrived, and this is sunrise over Sprague Lake. It's a popular place to go for sunrise and for good reason. These are the least chipmunks laying around on Sprague Lake. This also was right at sunrise uh, the second morning when we went into the park uh, with Gary Bortz. This day we had dropped Scout with a um, pet sitter for the first part of the day. This is a young um, mule dealer deer buck that was posing for us on a little rise. And this is a golden marmot uh, taken on Trail Ridge Road, which is the highest highway in the United States, and into an alpine uh, ecosystem. This is a Clark's Nutcracker, uh, again taken on Trail Ridge Road. Here is a bull elk that has just recently lost its uh, velvet on its horns. We were there just prior to the uh, elk rut. On the day after Gary left, which was a Monday, he left on a Sunday, uh, again we had a pet sitter scheduled for scout we left her first thing in the morning and then sharon and i went in on our timed entry uh, we had timed entry of every day that we were there uh, which is now a feature of trying to control crowds in the rocky mountain national park at any rate we went to see some sites that we hadn't seen yet and uh, this particular picture was taken uh, along the trail i had headed up ahead um, and crossed in an area where I wanted to photograph and Sharon was waiting for me when I uh, came back down the trail and I shot this picture of her, of her which I really like. One of the stops we got to, um, there was this ground squirrel that had learned how to beg and he uh, went up Sharon's leg a couple of times begging for food. Of course, we didn't feed them, but I got this picture of our friendly and aggressive ground squirrel looking up at Sharon and begging for food. I think at this same stop, I got this picture of the beautiful Stellar's Jay. The last night, I decided we should go back into the park and uh, we were headed towards one of our favorite places called Hidden Valley when we saw a number of cars pulled over at one of the turnouts. I pulled over and uh, got out and was told to get back into my car because there was um, they were going to uh, anesthetize a, a bull moose. And so I got back in and we just sat. And fortunately, where we were setting, uh, turned to be uh, a ringside seat for what happened. Uh, they were mm -hmm. 
trying to position so they could tranquilize this bull moose, which is named R7. He had been part of a study for five years, and he had a, a transmitting collar around his neck that they wanted to take off, take some um, blood samples and other vital information, and then release him. And as you can see, if you look closely, uh, he was missing his left eye. And they think that uh, he lost that in a, in a fight because there was no evidence of any infection. Anyway, this is a shot of him uh, as he was browsing and they were getting in position to tranquilize him. Uh, this is a shot of the team working over him uh, after he was tranquilized. It's about uh, 70 to 100 yards from where the tranquilizer was uh, first shot. And uh, you can see the vet working on uh, the moose. And this is a shot taken after he had regained consciousness and was heading out with without his his uh, tracking collar it was really quite fun to be able to witness this and watch you know our uh, conservation biologist uh, at work uh, helping to study and understand um, so our next stop um, was to head north to South Dakota to Custer State Park. Um, this is a shot of our little cabin uh, on Sylvan Lake. It's much smaller than the uh, VRBO we were in previously, but quite comfortable. There were no cooking facilities uh, inside the cabin, although we did have a small refrigerator and outside we had a cooking ring, which we used um, in the evenings a couple times. This is a picture of Sylvan Lake. Uh, we were, our cabin was fairly close to this, and it's just an absolutely gorgeous area. The rock formations are almost otherworldly, and you have a real sense of sort of adventure just walking around, exploring, going through uh, all the little nooks and crannies in these uh, fat. Um, rock foundations. It's just a magical area, uh, at least to my eye, um, and uh, a popular but not overcrowded place to vacation. I went out to take uh, a night sky um, photograph from just outside of our cabin. Now, unfortunately, there was um, some area lighting, so it wasn't quite as dark as I would like it to be, but still got a nice shot of the Milky Way, which is basically directly over our little cabin there at Sylvan Lake. One hmm. well, of the first things we did was to take the wildlife loop in Custer State Park, and um, there's lots of wildlife there, pronghorn, a uh, number of bird species, burrows, and uh, a rather large herds of bison. Uh, I think in total there's around 1,500, and this is a shot of uh, a part of one of the herds uh, that we took on the day that we went around the, the uh, wildlife loop. One of the other um, mammals that are there that are um, very f uh, frequently seen in several different places are the prairie dog, the black-tailed prairie dog. Um, we saw three or four uh, prairie dog towns, and this little guy was uh, close, and they're a lot of fun to observe and watch them cavort around, and um, uh, just a very playful-looking uh, animal. This will show a video I took that Sharon didn't realize I was recording as we're going through one of the tunnels, the narrowest of the tunnels on the Needles Highway, uh, a very beautiful and picturesque 
uh, drive. This tunnel is only eight feet wide, uh, which is remarkably narrow for today's vehicles. Where's the shit? Well, we can't get out of the car either. I know. They're getting in a little bitty thing. Okay, which way? I guess there's only one. Took one trip, uh, side trip from uh, Custer State Park. Uh, we'd taken in several of the other uh, sites in the area in our previous trip there six years ago. And this time we went to Spearfish Canyon, and this is a picture of us at Spearfish Falls, which is near the end of Spearfish Canyon. And we enjoyed uh, the drive, although it, we both decided it wasn't as picturesque as the area that we had left and probably wouldn't do it again. We also went to Deadwood, which is uh, an old Wallace mining town, which is now um, a basically a, a tourist trap, um, not our favorite. They were having a very large auto show while we were there, which was interesting to see all of the classic automobiles and to see them on the way back as they were doing a side tour to Spearfish Canyon. So this is the concert stage set up in downtown Deadwood for what was a four-day event. Um, while Bill Hickok was killed here, uh, while he was in a card game with uh, holding the famous aces and eights hand, well, I went into uh, we went into a bar that claimed to be the site where he was um, shot, and I paid the $10 to take the self-guided tour. And the first thing I read was, well, it was in that general vicinity that this occurred. So that um, my $10 got me into a place that somewhere near where he was shot, but not necessarily where he was shot. This is a picture shown and that's what I got for my $10 worth. This is an evening shot I took of near sunset of Sylvan Lake. Um, and then we would come back for the next shot um, well after sunset to get a night sky picture from the same location. So our next stop was Yellowstone, and where we uh, stayed for four days along um, Yellowstone Lake. Uh, the first morning out uh, was quite foggy, and we stopped along the Yellowstone River where this picture was taken in Hayden Valley. Uh, just as the fog was starting to break a little bit um, that morning, um, and it's just shortly after sunrise. Uh, this is above the fog in on Dunraven Pass, and you can see the blanket of fog down below. And as we descended the pass, we went back into it. So we were headed for uh, Lamar Valley, which is uh, just filled with wildlife. It's known as America's Serengeti, Serengeti for good reason. Uh, this is a picture I took of a pronghorn uh, in Lamar Valley, Valley. And not far from where that picture was taken, we had stopped and Sharon uh, spotted this coyote that was uh, hunting along a Pond, and then he or she moved um, away from the pond and actually closer to where we were located. And I got this picture of of the coyote uh, trotting away. One of the more exciting things that we saw in Lamar Valley was a female black 
um, colored wolf hunting and close enough that we could uh, take photographs of them and uh, someone was uh, also there with spotting scopes there were some wolf experts so we had nice conversation and information about this female uh, wolf that was hunting uh, her den was not far from there and for, at least for us that was uh, one of the highlights of this day Uh, one day we took what is called the uh, Grand Loop Tour, uh, where we headed uh, west from uh, Yellowstone Lake toward the Geyser area. Uh, we were there to see Old Faithful uh, erupt, which I'll show at the end uh, of this slide. And we went across to uh, Roosevelt Lodge, where we had a really delightful lunch and then south to the canyon area and then back to uh, to our cabin uh, it was full day tour um, the sites are still magnificent even this late in the season when schools were all back in it was uh, very crowded in the geyser area so much so that it really detracted from it so um, this picture is looking down uh, from the crest of the lower falls as the uh, Yellowstone um, gets down at the bottom and next I'll show you a video of the Yellowstone as it's it's approaching the crest of these falls This is a shot from further down on the Yellowstone, looking back toward the um, lower falls, uh, where those two uh, previous video, video and picture were taken. This is a view of the what's called the um, Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone from Artist Point. I think this is called Sapphire Pool. It's a picture that Sharon took of um, uh, this remar remarkable um, feature. Uh, next, I'll show um, the Old Faithful uh, eruption in its entirety. It's a couple minutes long, but you basically see the entire eruption of Old Faithful. The last time we went to Yellowstone, um, we stayed in Old Faithful Lodge in, in the old building, and it's really a magnificent um, piece of architecture built in some 13 months. It's a magnificent place, but not my favorite place to stay there at all, and basically due to the crowds. Um, the buses leave at, uh, start backing and getting positioned to leave around 5 a.m. So you hear those outside your windows and uh, it's in a, you're staying in, in a huge tourist attraction and the crowds are milling through all the time. So it's um, not my favorite place to stay at all, um, although 
uh, it is a beautiful place. It's just way too crowded to be enjoyable place to stay, at least for me. Uh, this is a shot that I took just before dawn uh, as we are leaving on one of the last outings in Yellowstone. This is uh, across Yellowstone Lake <clears throat> to the what's actually the edge of the caldera that you can see right before sunset, sunrise. This is a shot on the uh, Yellowstone River in the Lamar Valley. This bull bison had just finished giving himself a dust bath in the side of the river and uh, came up to graze uh, when I got this picture of him. Just to show it's not all mammals, uh, this is a pine siskin uh, we took a picture of. And a uh, red tailed hawk that was soaring over us um, while we were at uh, Yellowstone. So, from Yellowstone, we headed out um, for an intermediate stop uh, at Scott's Bluff. This is a picture uh, taken there in the evening once we arrived. Scott's Bluff was an important uh, passage point and milestone of the settlers uh, as they were going along uh, on the Oregon Trail. Uh, really quite a uh, beautiful bluff and site. Uh, Scott was the name of a fur trapper. And he was left here by his companions because he couldn't travel any further. They went out. Fur trapping, fur trapping, and when they got back uh, to this location, they found uh, Scott had died and found his bones, and they named the bluff after him. Uh, this is actually further west at Guernsey, Wyoming, and this is a cut uh, called Guernsey's Cut that was made uh, by the covered wagons as they were moving up from the Platte River through uh, this formation, which was relatively um, easily eroded. And this is the tracks made and the groove cut by thousands of wagon trains, uh, wagons going west on the Oregon Trail. And this is just a picture south of Norton um, showing uh, an old farmhouse. Um, this wasn't the settlers that originally come here, but this is their descendants. Um, and they're a big part of our history. And um, I liked including that picture in, in this um, presentation. So the last stop was for the family get together. Uh, we spent three days in Norton uh, at a VRBO on State Street, which turned out to be uh, an excellent place for us to stay because we had more time uh, for visiting and visiting uh, in a more natural setting. We spent some time uh, with Sharon's first cousin, Linda Donovan, and her husband, Pat, and my friend, Jerry, and his wife, Laura. Darling, but the first day was at Almina uh, with, at Lynette's house where this picture was taken. She did what has now become our um, tradition, which is a, a chicken and noodle feed. And that's all of us actually in the same place that we take a picture every year. And this was taken in the VRBO. Um, the following day, um, the day before we left, 
um, of everyone but Lynette, and she didn't come up to Norton. The last night that we were there, Garth and I had gone out earlier in the day and looked for a place to get some night um, photography uh, in before the moon came up, which was about 10.15 that night. So this is a shot looking south. And if you look um, in the left-hand sky, you can see the Big Dipper, and its two stars are pointing up out the North Star, which is right over Norton. Yeah. Interesting thing happened about the time that I took, um, shortly after I took this shot, and then I'll show you a, something else to look at while I tell that story. We, Garth and I were look, um, repositioning, and I saw a string of lights in the sky, and at first I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I didn't understand what it possibly could be. There were 30 or 40 equidistant lights. Uh, there was no sound, and they were uh, moving across the sky, and then they would disappear about a what would be a 1 o'clock position if straight up was, was noon. As it turns out, it was a Skylink train of satellites uh, at their shallow Earth orbit before they repositioned them further up for use um, but not knowing what it was it was a really a strange sight to behold one of the most remarkable things i've ever seen and both garth and i were really excited uh, to get back and tell everybody and then try to figure out what it was <laughs> this is a shot of uh, the milky way um, over a, um, a windmill um, south of norton And I'll bring this uh, to a close with some shots of uh, of Scout. We wondered uh, about this. We knew she was always good for traveling, but she turned out to be much better for the trip than we would have ever imagined. We had lots of conversations with different people because of Scout. Wherever we would stop, people would come up and want to pet her, and that would start a conversation, and she was very additive to the trip. Now in the national parks, we couldn't take her on the trails every, uh, else we could, and she loved it. Um, she loved every part of this. Um, she loved hunting uh, ground squirrels and uh, turkeys and anything else she could find. And she was really a delight to have and very additive to our trip. When we would go out to eat in the evenings, um, she was quiet, and we didn't need to worry about that. And Scout was just the best of traveling companions and added uh, much to our um, escape the, tr the heat vacation. <laughs>